What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Feels like it's been forever since we've done a patch preview. Or a patch review for that matter. But today's a huge one. 2.5. It's finally here. The patch that will save the game. We've been all been, you know, hitting the copium hard. Praying that uh, this will bring us the fixes that uh, will help improve Wild Rift. Obviously, this season's been a bit of a struggle. Not just for me. I've had a lot of you guys having your own issues with matchmaking and uh, reporting systems and stuff like this. But I hope that this patch will make a big difference. I'm pretty hopeful. Dev Diary review uh, should have gone up today. Also looked great. So yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we got something going on good here. And uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it, shall we? Okay, here we go. <laughs> I actually do a great Vigar impression, but I won't do it now. You have to come to my stream to hear it. It's black and blue and it's about to show you the meaning of pain. Vigar, the tiniest and evilest Yordle, makes his way to the mid lane for some explosive mage experiments and he's bringing a layer load of new features to Wild Rift 2. With guilds, you and your communities can get a little closer with chat, a shared space in game and ways to level up together. Then harness those bonds in the fires of competition in guild vs guild. Check out the matchmaking improvements keep it to keep things fair in the rift. Whole host of balance changes to shake up the meta before next month's Horizon Cup. Hoping a fresh look at the jungle keeps ganks flowing. Patch 2.5. New champions, Vigar. Vigar seems really cool. He will be coming out with the patch's release. I think he's gonna be pretty sick. Um, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with this kit, essentially it's like a, he's a burst mage. He has this ability called uh, something something cage. I don't know. <laughs> But essentially, he's this big scaling kind of control mage character. Yeah, his third ability is this AoE stun, puts this big cage on the ground. It's like a fist and some of his skins looks really cool. Uh, but it stuns anybody that walks into the ring of it, basically. So lots of control in that regard. He also has a stacking passive in Wild Rift. Every time you last hit a minion with any of his abilities, you get stacks on the passive, which increases the damage of his first ability permanently and reduces the cooldown of his second ability at certain stack thresholds. So I think it's every 50 stacks on PC. I'm not sure about the Wild Rift equivalent, but every X stacks, the second ability's cooldown is reduced by 10%. So he has really great scaling, big, big late game mage, big one shot character. His ultimate basically is this big explosive orb that does uh, more damage the lower health his target is. He's pretty fun to play. I think he'll be solid in mid AD and support, and he looks pretty good. Good. and you know as a tradition any any kind of mage or, or character that has solid aoe in from pc is generally pretty effective in wild drift and i think vega's second ability vega vega pro vega will be really influential so i think it'd be pretty good definitely excited to give him a try and yeah you know as you've seen with like senna these kind of like skate eternally scaling champions uh if they're in a pretty solid space they're, they're generally pretty good so i think he actually might be fairly solid at the better new features guilds uh, along with the social video, guilds are here. Guilds are in-game communities where you can connect to like-minded players, share news, chat, and more. Yeah, so they talked about this a lot in the dev diary. I think this is really cool. Cost wild calls or power coins to create. Um, use the guild finder to search for a guild based on shared interests. So yeah, definitely going to be making a guild for myself. Probably call it Rick's GG. You know, rep the org, rep the gang. I'll probably make it only subs to the Twitch, at least for the start. So apologies to any, you know, YouTube frogs who are, who are interested. But maybe if you're a Twitch subscriber, you know, you have a shot. But yeah, I'll definitely be talking about it on release for the patch what i'm planning to do but yeah the guild probably be, be sub by only at least for the beginning till we unlock more slots because you unlock more slots as you like do more of the guild quests and stuff the guild gets bigger so maybe when we expand it more in the future i'll have the opportunity to get more people in but it should be a lot of fun i think the guild kill thing is pretty cool um and yeah maybe in the future they'll do like more serious clash style things or something like this you never know um, but either way, I think it's I think it's a really cool feature. Definitely really excited for it. Definitely gonna make my own guild, so that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, you got this whole this whole guild v guild thing, and then you got the sabotaging and basically just doing missions with with your guild, and then unlocking bonus rewards. So pretty cool. Matchmaking to address some key matchmaking issues. Several upgrades will roll out over the coming weeks of patch 2.5. So maybe not necessarily on release. So be key to know there because it's over the coming weeks. Unless I'm just misreading it, I'm not sure. Maybe it just means the weeks of 2.5, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so a new matchmaking algorithm which causes the system to focus more on MMR rather than rank. This change will make matches much fairer overall, but you will see wider, wider rank discrepancies in game. This will be rolled out gradually through past 2.5. Uh, this will be really helpful, I think, from like accounts like my main account maybe, um, which is basically stuck in Emerald, but my MMR is so high that I can't find any games. I guess because it's looking for other accounts in Emerald slash Diamond that have the same MMR my main does, which is just really like impossible to find. Because during the last season as well, I couldn't find any games on my main account because my MMR was too high um, consistently. So now I've dropped out to like Emerald because I haven't been able to play games on it for like two seasons. 
hopefully this change will help so now i can get placed into you know like the the you know master plus games where my account's mmr probably is that they showed like yeah, the rank competence tag a little badge and loading screen that essentially shows you know oh i have an mmr player on my team but they're actually playing at this mmr that i'm in so i don't need to be too worried about like oh it's an emerald uh, i mean this is just a small quality of life thing not a big deal but uh we're reducing a back-end system that adjusts the way we create matches in real time it's a bit complex so bear with us in past 2.4 before the matchmaker only let players match if their mmr and rank were within a certain distance of each other but this has started small and then grew a set amount every second which happened over a two minute period after that the allowed rank and mmr gap had fully expanded and the system stated this expanded save for the next 18 minutes for a total of 20 possible searching minutes at that point the search tightened out and needed to be restarted um it meant it was faster to keep waiting the worst restart in the 20 minutes yeah 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 in past 2.5, the matchmaker starts out with the expansion set to be as big or as small as needed using real-time data on the players in the matchmaking pool. The new system aims to guarantee every player finds a match with a reasonable amount of time and well within the 20-minute timeout period. We hope we get closer to 3 to 5 mixes at maximum. Overall, speed you'll find fair matches at faster rate. Sounds like a great change. You know, I can't argue with that. That's how it works. Like I said, couldn't find any games on my main. So if that happens, sick. I would love to play games on my main again. <laughs> where I actually have like skins and all this cool stuff I'd love to use, but just can't actually play on the account. So this would be a really great change if it works. Uh, ranked gains, in particular in high ranked games, should now be more consistent. This change also fixes an issue where players can catapult from master to challenge by manipulating DP gains. Great change. Um, you know, obviously a lot of content creators and other personalities talking about the fact that you could basically sit in master at like 99 lp or vp and then you'd win plus 20 regardless of how high you climb so now you know a vp a bit more um sporadic isn't the right word like flexible you essentially like gain and lose as you climb um and as you hit different mmr tiers as opposed to it waiting for the daily reset to, to kind of take an effect so i think that's a really great change definitely had a lot of complaints about this glad to see it's in already i thought it's coming at 2.6 so really cool to see this is already in wild pass wild pass is proven new features and content um there'll be a separate blog for this uh but yeah they've upgraded the ui this this tristana skin i think is pretty cool explore tristana did we skip the skins by the way i think i skipped over the skins right Maybe I didn't. I guess we didn't get to skins yet. We'll carry on. Uh, but yeah, Hexboro of Tristan, I think looks really cool. Definitely my favorite of the ones so far. The Jax is pretty good, but Teemo sucks. You know, frick Teemo, dude. I hate that guy. Free version of Wild Pass. I post a reward at every level up to 50. Wow, that's really cool. I didn't know that. Um, so actually, they made it so you get a reward every single level now. That's pretty cool. Honestly, they probably just spread out the rewards. So instead of getting like 500 blue boats at level 10, you get 50 at like level 1 through 10. But I mean, either way, it's cool to have like consistent um, rewards. Uh, purchasing a basic elite pass gives you access to seasonal missions that power your progress and more content below level 50. Proof is still accessible to elite pass players, so elite pass players will now gain the wild pass boost, which grants more XP for each mission and sets you on the fast track. Okay, so if you don't play quite as much, maybe the elite pass will be better for you. But I think with the amount I play, the basic pass has proved perfectly sufficient, and especially now that you get the bonus missions as well without getting the elite pass, it should be pretty simple to, to, to fill it out over the, the season. Added profile borders is a brand new reward type, that's cool, and yeah, Hexmore and Tristana. Uh, Twitch streaming, yeah, they've added a new thing so you can stream directly from within wild rift i think this is really cool i won't personally use it because i have like a more serious setup but for anybody who's looking to like try streaming and you know just only has a phone I think this is a really really cool option that it you know it integrates directly into twitch this would be cool if you're interested in that position preference has been added to unranked games great system position preferences work really well for me actually today i got jungle for the first time which is my fifth role and that's been like the entirety of position preference which was like two or three months now <laughs> but today was the first time i got my fifth role um so i thought that was kind of funny here we go skins so superb villa Vyga, great skin love it hex portrait star that's pretty cool and then eternal dragon brand fade dragon ash Lagoon Dragon, Kaisa, Storm Dragon, Aso, and Zephyr Dragon Master Yi, which is a Wild Rift debut. I didn't realize that it was a, a Wild Rift exclusive skin. Very cool. This Kaisa skin is pretty sick. Definitely a cool, a cool ensemble of skins. I think the Ash one's really cool. I like the brand one as well. It has some cool effects. So probably gonna pick that one up. Accessories. We've got a whole bunch of accessories here. New icons and such. This Vigar mode is pretty neat. Anything else cool in here? I like this Bowing Jin. That's pretty cool. Uh, this Recall looks pretty swell. Definitely some interesting looking stuff in here. A bored Seraphine. I guess she's kind of sleeping. I might use the Vigar icon. I'm a bit of a Vigar gamer. I think Vigar was like one of the first champs I actually bought on League PC originally. And I, I bought like four of his skins or something as well. <laughs> I have like an insane amount of Vigar skins for some reason. And then we got some uh, some banners. These are... I guess these are... Uh, looks like there's a, some sort of a dragon event coming then. Because these look like the... The thing that we had in the Sentinel event, where when you spawned, you spawned, what's it called, like a spawn tag, I think they called them. And this looks like a border for the quick profile, so that's new, pretty cool. Profile borders, just started to wake us. Oh, so this is specifically for the profiles people tap on your friends list. That's what you get from the wild pass now. That is something new, that is pretty cool. Um, you could definitely get some cool things for that. Vigar's arrival event, October 15th. Oh, yeah, there is a way of the Dragon Monster event coming October 20th, 20th. So yeah, we saw some spawn tags and stuff. Yeah, so I guess you got five different blessings for each of the skins. 
Probably get a pose or something like usual. Champion changes. Ari. Ari is overperforming across all skill levels. So we're giving her a tune down across the board. I did get slapped by Ari or the series. That is how it went down. Uh, so she's lost 40 base HP. Always pretty substantial change. Definitely makes lane phases a lot weaker. Especially with a champion like Ari. She's already kind of flimsy into assassins. She relies a lot on charm basically to protect herself and so this could definitely put her in some thresholds more often where she'll die before like the charm can actually save her or even through the charm so there's actually pretty substantial to lose this base health mana per level going down a bit no it's not a, too, a huge deal normally especially once you get lost chapter and stuff and then over deception is actually losing um 10 damage at every rank because this is actually times two because it's the magic and true damage so she's actually losing uh yeah 10 damage per rank on orb a little bit noticeable for her wave clip probably overall Probably still be fine, but just a little bit weaker. Although this base HP nerf will be a lot more substantial, I think, than the uh, Orb of Deception nerf, probably. Akshan! We now have the technology to make Akshan's heroic swing feel better when using obtuse angles. Here are some greater quality of life changes to help Akshan players make better decisions about his ultimate. Heroic swing, Akshan will side along a wall if he hits it at an obtuse angle mid-swing. Sick change he has as a PC. Everybody can play the did have a wild rift, but it also makes swinging a lot more consistent, a little bit less flimsy. And yeah, you'll be able to get a lot more of them. I think this might be the change that finally puts Akshan consistently in the meta, because this gives him a lot more flexibility with his E, um, and how he could use it, especially once you get used to the rulings of it. Comeuppance now has an indicator that displays enemies within the kill threshold. Really great change, nice quality of life. And he has a bolt tooltip now accurately states... Oh, bug fix it. It's an update to the tooltip that shows it executes minions. So, great changes for Akshan. I think he's really close to being meta. It's just maybe people aren't playing him, or maybe there's not many AP junglers. You know, there's always, like, a bunch of excuses when it comes to AD mids, but I think he feels really solid, so he might be really close now. Annie. Annie's ultimate is too generous in allowing her to stun targets from a long distance, and it's currently too easy to snag multiple enemies in a single cast. We're bringing down the radius and damage of the initial Tibbers cast, but to compensate, we're pulling power out of her Molten Shield in order to buff up the bear himself, making him to a larger threat. Pulling power out of her molten shield? Okay. I'm confused. It sounded like they're nerfing Tibbers, and then they said to compensate with nerfing molten shield. <laughs> oh, I guess because he has a... Okay, let me just read it so I can understand, and then I'll get back to you, all right? Everybody calm down. Uh, so molten shield's cooldown is becoming scaling, so minus one second at max rank, but plus two at zero. This is kind of generally a nerf because she maxes at last. And the shield amount is also going down per rank, and the AP ratio has been reduced. Uh, the AOE of Tibbers has been reduced. The base damage has been lowered. But his aura burn has gone up. His flame aura damage has also been buffed both in terms of base damage and scaling. Um, the frequency has also gone up to four ticks per second. So this makes the damage a little bit more consistent. I'm assuming this isn't like quadrupling the damage. It's just making it so it ticks instead of uh, being every second. It's like you know, every 0.25 seconds. And his enraged attack speed no longer decays. Uh, let me just look up Annie because I'm assuming this triggers when she molten shields him or something. I don't actually know what the Annie changes all are in Wild Rift, I'm not gonna lie to you, and you know, I don't play much Annie, believe it or not. Let me just, let me just have a gander, uh, if there's anything specific. So it doesn't seem like there's any actual synergy between Molten Shield and Tibbers, unless I'm just missing it. This is pretty big though, the Enrage attack speed, because yeah, he gets a really big attack speed buff. This is when Annie dies, I think. Yeah, when Annie, upon summon, when Annie dies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, upon summon, when Annie dies or if an enemy champion is affected. Oh, so it doesn't decay. It just, it just drops. So it lasts three seconds still, but he doesn't decay anymore. So it's actually pretty substantial because it means he'll have a consistent, like, massive attack speed bonus throughout the, the steroid. Um, that could be fairly noticeable. Okay, so yeah, they're saying they're making Molten Shield weaker to make Tibbers himself stronger. So they're making her less about the initial burst combo and more about kind of having this pet Tibbers down that... Um, is, is affecting affecting the battlefield and, and kind of getting a lot of work done as, as he stays alive. So I think that's kind of an interesting change. I don't know why they keep nerfing Annie, to be honest, but maybe I'm missing something. I guess her numbers are just really high. I don't know. Ash! Ash's utility is not quite hitting the mark in general, so we're bo boosting the Frost Archer's passive slow to give her more room to kite her opponents to set up her allies. Slow amount Frost Shop going up and critical slow amount going up as well. I think it's a pretty good change. It's kind of small, but it could be noticeable. Yeah, it could definitely make an impact. I think Ash is pretty cool. I like when Ash is in the meta. She's been pretty popular in North America in esports, so Maybe we should make our way across the world with these changes because I think this is a nice little utility change. Buffing the slow amount, giving a little bit more kiting and chasing power. Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul has quietly been a safe and powerful pick in the mid lane for some time, but reducing his base armor and the mobility he gains from Celestia expansion to open up more space for healthy counterplay. I can't believe they're nerfing A-Soul. That's freaking hilarious, dude. How sad is that? I remember the A-Soul meta. Every time I see this champ, like sometimes it performs on one tricks, but even one tricks feel like they struggle a lot of matchups and it's just not in a great spot. So I cannot believe they're nerfing this champ. Um, that's pretty hilarious. 
Camille. Camille is dominant in multiple positions for highly skilled players. We believe that she has too much flexibility in her position selection. We are removing her ability to clear the jungle quickly. Now the second cast of Hookshot no longer hits jungle monsters. This will also disable Camille's ability to trigger Hookshot's attack speed buff in order to make her jungle player riskier bet that rely more on ganks to succeed. So this is the change they made on PC a long time ago that killed Camille jungle. I expect to do the exact same thing in Wild Rift. Essentially your stun will no longer stop when hitting a large monster. Um, but what this means is that you can't get the attack speed bonus in the jungle anymore. You can only get it on hitting champions, which means that her jungle clear is much slower. Her dueling in the river is a little bit less consistent because normally you can even like stun the crab if you have to to get that attack speed buff. You don't have to hit the champion. Um, but basically, I imagine this will probably kill Camille jungle for the most part. She'll obviously still have pretty good ganking, but her clearing will be so much slower that she'll literally be ganks only. Um, and with the nature of the jungle changes in this patch as well, I think it really doesn't fit this style. So I think we'll probably not see Camille on the jungle anymore she'll probably be stuck in, in mid in maryland and i wouldn't expect it to see, to, see her, to see her continue to see play as that flexible jungle option Diana! Diana's very close to being a viable jungler, so we're giving her a light nudge to help her succeed a little more moon silver blade getting a 10 percent uh, bonus hit on monsters uh, maybe it's not a spawn in the first clear this seems a little bit light to me compared to like what they've done with like fizz for example in the past um but it could be enough that it pushes her to be a solid jungler that'd be really good because we definitely need ap juggles so yeah hopefully this does succeed uh, Fizz players have been giving us feedback about Fizz's ultimate fish not matching its hitbox. We agree, we're fixing it to better match its visuals, so it's easier to position around. Chub the water's hitbox adjusted to match the visual. I assume this is the initial throw, which is good because yeah, it really doesn't match the visual at all. It's weird as heck. Uh, so yeah, glad to see them fix that. Galio! Galio's tanky support build is performing a little bit too well and all skill levels makes him an overly flexible pick. We're taking a light chip out of his shield of Durand to make playstyles that invest points in it. Early, a little bit less effective. So yeah, maxing shield is a bit less, maxing is a second bit, a bit less effective now. I didn't even know they did this on support Galio. Is that actually what they do? I guess it would make sense, but I never really thought about it. So I guess, yeah, it's enough to support Galio, but it's just base damage, so it won't be super substantial. Didn't hit the shield or anything, so it should, should mostly be fine. Gragas, Gragas is a dominant pick and professional player in a multiple position flex. Flex. When it's great, when skilled Gragas players set up the team with a powerful, not black, Explosive cast currently holds too much damage and is available a little bit too frequently in the early game. Um, so early game nerf on, on explosive cask and a base damage nerf as well in the earlier ranks. I think it's pretty understandable, Gragas, like they say, has been a pretty solid pick in many roles for a very long time. So especially support lately, I think it's been his, his main role. It's a big nerf to support as well, because obviously support Gragas gets levels a lot slower than laning Gragas or you know solo lane Gragas or jungle Gragas. Um, so he won't get access to this these, these you know non-nerfed stats until much later. Um, so overall, yeah, pretty big hit to support Gragas especially, but overall Gragas is early. Cask value is definitely lowered. Javan! Javan's flag and drag combo is a little clunky, so it's getting smoothed out. Um, Demacian Standard new speed sped up dash startup time when using Dragon Strike to dash at Demacian Standard. Kind of impossible to know what this means without seeing it in game, but maybe it'll make Javan a lot more consistent as they say, I don't know. <laughs> it's, hard, it's tough to say, but just reading it how much of an impact that is. Jin. Jin is sitting at an acceptable power level in most respects, but the strength of his utility is a bit under what we'd like it to be. Um, so a nice little buff to the root duration of Deadly Flourish. This would be pretty good. I like Jin as well. I talk about it a lot. I really like the ADC meta where they're like utility heavy, like Jin, Ash, Senna, ADC. Like I always think this is kind of a fun meta and a bit different when the the, AD, the utility heavy ADCs are a bit more in play. So I think this is a cool change. Just just a little small buff to Jin. Um, and also yeah, there's another buff to the items later that I think will uh, probably help him a little bit. Cannon. We believe that Cannon is. Close to having a healthy presence in the master game, but is yet to make an impact in high-level play. We're amping up his landing phase by increasing his base AD and increasing the movement speed gain from Lightning Rush. So yeah, I mean, I thought the last changes made Kata pretty close to being good. This could be the one that pushes him over. 6 AD is pretty substantial in the early game, you know? You hit an, an enemy 10 times in the lane phase now, which is obviously pretty consistent. You basically got a free auto compared to his base damages, right? Like, because you gain plus 6 AD. You don't even have to hit him 10 times, I guess, realistically. You have to hit them 9 times. But yeah, if you hit them 9 times, you basically got a free auto from last patch. So that's, you know, it adds up really fast when you think about it like that. And a little bit of extra movement speed on his third ability will help him catch up with opponents pretty consistently, especially melee foes. Lee Sin. Oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. Ring the alarm. The Lee Sin alarm. Lee Sin is a popular and powerful jungler that has been particularly dominant in high-level play. In order to reduce how quickly he can burst down targets, we are soft reworking Iron Will so it persists across two attacks but deals less damage with each hit. Great change, honestly. I think this is such a smart change. Um, so yeah, he now technically does a little bit more damage on both hits because it's 26 base compared to 50 base on two hits, so it's 52. But it'll be mitigated. Um, I guess a bit, maybe, maybe the mitigation will change that and make it even. 
But either way, uh, you know, he won't always consistently get the two autos, and it also just <laughs> really tones down that insane burst style that Lee Sin has, especially without hitting his first ability of just like dashing on someone, auto, reset auto for like a gajillion damage, um, and just, just one tapping people in that way. I think this is a really good change. Um, I think this could honestly be enough to make him feel pretty solidly balanced. It would definitely remove a lot of like the lower skill aspects of his kit because because of how free his second ability is in this game comparatively to PC where he has to hit a target like a ward. It gives him so much more freedom to make plays and dash around and fight people. So overall, I think this change will at least make him feel a lot easier to duel and fight against and really limit the amount of instant burst strength he has, giving you more time to kind of react to what he wants to do. Lux. Lux is very close to being a healthy spot in mid, but giving some love to her ultimate scaling to reward high EP builds. Plus 10% on her ult. Don't really think Lux mid is going to benefit a massive amount from this, but you never know. Nunu. Nunu Willem's power levels have snowballed out of control after their release. As players have grown to understand the boy and his yeti, they've grown to become a menace for players of all skill levels. We're lowering the survivability and clear speed. Less base or less armor per level. Consume true damage nerfed at later ranks. And the base healing is nerfed, the latent ranks, and the heal bonus HP ratio is also nerfed. So basically just nerfs to his consume. I honestly, honestly haven't seen enough Nunu. I feel like he is in a pretty good spot. He feels really strong. The few times I've seen him, there's like at least one guy in EU that's like one tricking him, but he seems really successful. I think the champ's in a pretty good place, but yeah, hasn't really seen much play. But I think it's pretty solid. No, I don't think consume, because it is obviously a really powerful tool. Pantheon. Pantheon's been struggling to find his place amongst other Baron Lenders and high-level play, so reducing the cooldown of his Grand Star Fall to give skilled players more opportunities to get a minus cooldown. Minus 10 at all ranks, basically. Pretty good. Yeah, give him more Grand Star for opportunities. And obviously, Pantheon builds a lot of ability haste generally, so that will help that as well. Just very synergistic in that regard. Riven. Riven is overperforming in multiple roles, definitely. <laughs> so we're taking this opportunity to cut down on two big points of frustration of play against her. Her early game damage output and the uptime on her defensive abilities. So minus uh, 5 base damage on her first ability. Now again, much like Ari, this doesn't look like much, but this is actually 15 per rank, not 5 per rank, because you have to consider that she activates it three times. Um, so she's actually losing 15. 15 base damage per rank on Broken Wings and plus one second of Valor. This would definitely be substantial, definitely make her a lot easier to lane against um, an overall. Less of a dominant pick, I think. Maybe more of the ego pick that I've heard she's supposed to be. But yeah, this may push her out of the meta a little bit. I like the hitting a lot of the, the meta staples this patch. Camille, Riven, Gragas, at least Sin, all getting nerfs. Seems pretty good. I mean, like, then you got like Ari, Galio, these champs getting nerfs as well. So it seems pretty good. I like that they're hitting a lot of the competitive staples, especially right before Horizon, just to kind of freshen up the meta a bit. Seraphine. Seraphine's getting some, the same quality of life feature from a PC version. Starting with max echo stacks means she has a few more options for level one. This is really cool because now you can start with her third ability and invade with root. There's such a problem before you had to like waste a bunch of mana stacking your root charge <laughs> throughout the uh, while running to the invade because obviously Seraphine has to hit the the E twice to get the natural root, so it's pretty frustrating in that regard. Shivana! Shivana is struggling a little bit in organized play and high skill ranks, so amping up her strategic power as a power farmer and a dragon killer, 5% more damage to Drake's and more damage on Burnout. This could be pretty good that she could push Shivana back into the meta a little bit, giving her faster clear speed, especially with the changes to jungle that are giving you more gold. Could actually suit Shivana pretty well, so this could actually see the return of Shivana. Um, the other thing is like, yeah, because there's like two Rift Heralds now, which we'll get to, um, this could mean that, you know, there'd be more dragon trading and um, people are more, you know, people are less opposed to like all inning dragon all the time. So that gives Shivana more opportunities to actually like force a trade that favors her, which is getting the Drake or at the worst case, getting a Herald for it. Soraka. Soraka is falling off a bit too much in high levels play after our last round of changes. We wanted to have a higher payoff, which is successful at popping her only hard crowd control. Same buff that Jin got. Pretty good, I guess. But overall, <laughs> kind of sucks that they had nerfed her so hard after they gave her those buffs. Uh, Tristana. Tristana is underperforming at all ranks against composition that she should be strong against, reducing her offensive downtime to make her slightly less punishable throughout the game. So one second of rapid fire and one second of explosive charge the ranks. Just nice quality of life. I don't know, Tristana's never seemed really good, um, but she's always seemed fairly close, just a bit clunky and kind of hard to play. But uh, maybe this will be the change that pushes her a bit more into the limelight again. Trindamir, oh baby. Consistently across all skill levels, but particularly in higher skill games, Trindamir has struggled as a laner, but performed quite well as a jungler. This patch is taking a larger swing and balancing out his positions by giving him a new mechanic he can take advantage of in lane, more so than in the jungle. As a result, we also need to rebalance some of his 
stats and abilities to make sure trim was not overly or make sure jungle trim was not overly buffed. It's a pretty large change to be keeping an eye on how it performs. Rah. So did you see trim to was better in mid on PC now? What if he was better in mid on Wild Rift? Base damage down by 12 seems pretty substantial, but he's got more scaling 80 per level, and he's got less starting bonus attack speed, which you might think is weird. But Battle Fury, uh, they've actually increased the crit chance from 1.6 to 3% based on level and double 100 fury to 3.2 to 5% per point of fury. So this is really substantial, especially like your two items. You very easily hit 100% crit with like Charge Blade and Navori and just like base passive. You get more fury gained with unit kills with attacks. So a little bit more fury. And then attacking a champion grants Trindamir 50 to 75% attack speed for five seconds, which has a six second cooldown after it runs out. This is basically lethal tempo, the rune on PC that has made Trindamir fairly strong on the lane base. And they just gave it to him and his kit, which kind of implies we won't be getting lethal tempo as a rune time soon, by the way. Sorry, vain gamers. Bloodlust heal has also been uh, buffed, the uh, HP ratio per fury. A mocking shout slow has been reduced a little bit. The undying range now has the bonus attack speed uh, scaling thing. Now these changes are freaking massive. This could actually genuinely make mid Trindamir, which I was already playing a little bit and I don't think it's that bad right now. Completely insane. Definitely could be a meta pick at this point. Based on how he's performed recently in PC, people have worked him out and these items that you know, he has separate items that make him strong, which is like Charge Blade and Navori and Wildish, but they do accomplish a similar thing. I think Trindamid genuinely could be a pretty popular pick on 2.5. So this is definitely scary. I guess they saw Trindamid was at Worlds. So they were like, you know, we wanted the Horizon Cup. Trend a bit. Um, so that's pretty pretty nuts changes for sure. He'll definitely be way better. Um, so those, those are pretty crazy. Wukong! Wukong is clearing the jungle too quickly, so removing his ability to amplify his damage against large monsters for his clear. I didn't actually know that it, it you know, this is a big part of it, but I guess it makes sense. So this would definitely hit Wukong's clear a bit and make him clear, jungle a bit slower. But late Wukong has actually been popping up lately, and I think jungle Wukong has also honestly fallen off a fair bit since his real, like since he first came out. Um, so overall, a bit, a bit of a weird nerf, but yeah, I guess that lets them balance him a bit easier in the future. And Zig, Zig is a bit too powerful in the mid game, you don't say, where he can harass opponents and rotate around the map to demolish turrets more freely. We've retuned his passive base damage curve so it's weaker in the mid game but starts at the same value and scales to the same value. So basically making it so his passive auto is a bit weaker in the mid game. I mean once again it just feels like such a weird thing to hit. I don't know why they, maybe this is how you nerf him but like it doesn't really, uh, he doesn't harass opponents with his passive. He harasses opponents by throwing bombs man. Why are we hitting the passive? I feel like Ziggs will still be cracked. <laughs> I feel like he'll still be really good. Maybe they'll nerf a bit more for Horizon, who knows. But overall, while I get the idea of the change, it doesn't really seem to accomplish kind of what they want. Uh, I don't know. If anything, it's more of a nerf to kind of his early laning, I think, where these kind of numbers are a bit lower, like maybe one to seven. So his early trading a bit, a bit weaker, as opposed to actually hitting his mid-game harass, because that definitely doesn't come from his passive. Aram changes. Aram now has a Scryer's Blue. Woo! Anyway, uh, gameplay changes, so ally buffs, you can now not cast shields on clones basically, which is basically just Wukong right for now I think, maybe I'm forgetting something. Uh, Graceful Charity, the support gold buff thing, um, it now starts at 4 minutes instead of 5 and they get 2 bonus gold, so this is if you have the least gold, you gain additional gold per second. So this is really big for supports, it gives them a lot more gold actually, it's very substantial and it starts earlier, so I think you'll definitely feel this if you are a support player and you'll probably really enjoy this change. Summon a spell Flash. Making Flash interact more consistently with non-ultimate skill shot dash abilities. In Patch 2.5, Flash, Flash will cancel many dash abilities but still activate or bring their effects to the Flash location. E.g. flashing your ribbon's third cast of Broken Wings will part the lock up at the new location. So this change is really big actually. Um, I can't think of a dramatic amount of examples right now. I think the biggest ones are like Fiora, Renekton, and Riven like they say. Riven Q3 especially. You can't flash during it right now, we just cancel it. But now this means you can actually extend your Q3 and get that knock up further away, which is a really big skill change. But yeah, Fiora Q, for example, you can Q flash now and you'll catch someone at the end. Renekton, you can E flash and you can land on someone and you'll get the reset. All these are really big actually, so that's a lot of um, skill play to these kind of champions. So really interesting change. Tier 3 items, you now cannot purchase multiple copies of the same tier 3 item. I can't even think of many examples of this, but I guess it was happening somewhere. But I mean, probably a good change overall. <laughs> uh, energized items now stack. This is the change I was talking about for Jin that could be pretty effective for him because generally he's kind of one of the only champions that likes to go Storm Razor, but that means he can stack like a Storm Razor and a Rapid Fire Cannon and then get these really big energized attacks. Could be interesting. Um, kind of a shame to not see Storm Razor get that bonus passive where it buffs energized attacks as well. But, you know, 
Oh, well, happens. Proto Belt and Charge now has the same factor as Flash as well. This is much more interesting. For example, Gragas, you can now body slam Proto Belt and you can extend your body slam and it will uh, land a bit further. So that's a pretty big change, for example. Definitely as interesting as, as, the, as the Flash one. Same examples, you know, if you're a first ability into Proto Belt, Riven, Q3 into Proto Belt, these are all really good examples of like ways you could like use this new mechanic. But especially for future champions, this is a really big deal and pretty cool, I think. I think it's nice to add a little bit more skill flexibility to the game and giving you more options and stuff you could do. Jungle, after observing the jungle position over the last year, we are making a decent amount of changes aiming at making jungle a bit less hectic to play and reduce the likelihood of unhealthy strategies like gold funneling. Overall, we expected the changes to be a small net nerf to jungle as it's currently the highest impact position in Wild Rift. So Smite now has a, a pet, oh, it gives you 20% bonus extra gold for monsters, but you get a minion and gold XP penalty or a higher XP penalty of minus 25% for having Smite. Definitely a nerf to kind of those junglers that clear a few camps and then sit in the lane for a while. They won't be getting anywhere near as much XP from doing that so if you're really ineffective uh you guys know i complain a lot about <laughs> junglers who uh just just like clear two camps and then chill around mid lane and then get level three but this would be a big nerf to that play style in general especially because you now get extra gold from monsters which means you want to be clearing your camps a lot more consistently because you'll be missing out on on those kind of camps if you don't take them in conjunction with spice changes we're tuning monster, jungle monster gold to make sure junglers remain roughly equal you know to other positions respawn rates are also being tuned as we felt that the camps themselves were respawning too quickly they did too many conflicted situations where a jungler had to choose between power farming or ganking so a small large monster respawn time has been increased for 15 seconds and the bounties of all camps have been reduced by roughly the same amount that you're gaining the 20 percent from um from smite it's actually a little bit of a buff in some camps for example you know the red brambleback instead of uh you know you get instead of getting 140 you're now getting 156 if you have a smite because you get 20 percent extra gold but it is enough to other roles taking camps a little bit but yeah overall most of these are uh if if not a buff then then fairly even for example krugs now gets you 72 you know large raptors will give you 72 as well so it's a little bit of buff on large raptors a little bit less on krugs but mainly buffs will be giving you a bit more gold consistently as well especially uh evolved buffs Mobile is actually full gold enough. So overall, it's roughly similar for, for junglers. They get a little bit more gold from some camps, a little bit less from other camps, but it's roughly even. Mainly just other roles. Yeah, it's just it, in combination with the... the 20% extra gold buff essentially they're making it so it comes out about even baron nasher initial spawn time has been delayed and the empowered minions bonus damage has been lowered so they, they mentioned here that it felt like baron just locked out of the game and just gave you the win i don't think that's a terrible thing but yeah it was very hard to clear baron minions all the time so now they're making it so they do a little bit less bonus damage they have a little bit more time to wave clear and kind of break through those big empowered waves and then now yeah rift held will now respawn once after four minutes its default despawn time is now 12 minutes they also increase the amount of damage does to structures 1500 plus summoning champions level times 50 interesting so the formula is really interesting and it also takes a bit more damage when damaging structures as well but basically this means there can now be two rift heralds in the game a second one will spawn after the first one has died four minutes later this adds a lot more variance especially to that like lull state where you're like waiting for like the next dragon and this kind of stuff you don't really have stuff to set up for so this adds like another big objective i think which is actually feasible unlike baron on spawn generally wasn't really possible at nine minutes all the time but especially if like objectives get staggered in a game like dragon gets taken heralds a minute later then you have another dragon then you have another herald and another dragon coming later then you have nash i think it'd be cool to add a cool dynamic to the game overall so i'm very excited for the second herald to come communications ping chat and emotes now show the same spamming cooldown increase the activation area for the emote wheel revival effects and zonia's and chan now have a countdown bar visible only to your allies this is pretty cool so you can see when your allies are going to come out of the zonia if you want to hit them with a heal or time a uh, shield or something the in-game Texture has been slightly widened and added the ability to place your unique URL to invite friends to join Wild Rift and add them as a friend. Controls for melee champions, tapping in the attack button has increased sensitivity to choosing enemy champions outside of your melee attack's range. This change will mean that melee champions will need to rely on the minion button more often to farm in lane. We'll be keeping an eye on your feedback around this change and offer a setting if enough builds feel like it is hard to adapt, but we expect this tuning to resolve more issues that it, that it creates as it will make it way less likely for a melee champion to randomly attack a passer by minion. While dash in move direction is on, tap casting a dashing ability without a move stick input now dashes at targets instead of the direction that the player's champion is facing. Some general tuning to make accidental drags less likely to occur. Increase the maximum size of ability button to help players drag aim on longer range abilities and have a wider sense of tuning for drag sensitivity and touch feedback for store and other areas. Cool. And then the store, out of the yellow dot, 
which is now appearing of a new content that's available, and players are now granted a one-time opportunity to select from one of five skins after they purchase Wild Cores for the first time after past 2.5. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's pretty pretty neat. Uh, extra bits, upgraded the visuals of the social share screens, Thresh's model and Splash have been updated to match his visuals in the, uh, the cinematic, that's really cool. Optimized patches on Android to reduce the size of downloads, updated flow for new players, and made adjustments to the second tutorial. So cool, really great patch. Excited for all this stuff, you know, I mean, we just went over a whole bunch of stuff, but I think it's gonna be sick. I'm really excited for a lot of these changes. I'm really excited for guilds. I'm really excited for Vyga. I think it's gonna be great. I really hope the matchmaking works out. That'll be the biggest thing I think for me this patch is whether the matchmaking changes will help you know, kind of unlock my main account especially, but also be making so you're more consistently able to get reasonable games, especially in higher low. But, you know, overall, across the whole lot of people having issues, so it'd be really great if it, it kind of resolves it for everybody. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this patch review. My name is Mr. Stitch. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. You can also subscribe for more content like this. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys on the fields for patch 2.5. Have a great one. Peace.